Election speeches? Election speech practice. I'm torn, honestly. I kind of like her. <laughs> I want her to win. They won't let Ino Miko be laughed at. Are they going to align themselves with what really matters? It's not student elections, that's for sure. No, no, let's not embrace the dark side for victory. Eating phantom medicine. Duh, what do you think? Oh, phantom medicine was close. Why? Wow, we got, a, we got a real feeler here. Oh no. <laughs> Just like that, life is brought into creation. Give this girl props. This is such an intimidating cast that she's going up against. She's just a freshman, defying the odds. How can you not root for her? <laughs> That's for damn sure. I don't know if she's gentle, but she definitely is pure of heart. She's doing it for Yusaka, or whatever her miniature friend's name is. And the perspective is everything. There are many for whom this means nothing, but for them it means everything. Oh no, the popularity difference. It's alright, they'll have their time to shine, even if they don't win now. This is the beginning of a bright career. Okay, got their attention. Yeah, well that's what Kakia does. She plans and she executes. Yeah, I forgot how big of a business this was. No, you cannot. They live their lives in a capacity of scheming for everything. You're just outboxed. <laughs> and give the people what they want. Make big promises and have cool graphics. The answer to all your political problems. <laughs> Call it what it is, I guess. They're seeming sort of like the villains here, no? You know, the evil empire of student politics. They gotta rein it in a little bit and have a little bit of heart for Miko. I feel like that's where this is going. You can't let this all be about victory. You lose something key in the process. She doesn't quite have the people skills. How many little people did she just eat? Oh. Miko, I believe in you. No! <laughs> How could you be nervous? Speaking in front of the whole school as a freshman. Oh, she has trouble with public speaking. Yeah, yeah, I get that. All the baggage of her past is just with her at all times on stage. Yeah. person who hates fun is no fun herself. Yes, thank you. There's the heart I was looking for. There's such a vacuum of it. Step up, Miyuki. This is what I need from them right now. Those cycles are hard to break, man. Areas where you've struggled in the past, it just creates a loop. Focusing on failure makes it more likely to fail. And failure being as painful as it is, especially in, in this kind of public fashion, makes it almost impossible for it not to come to mind. That's a death spiral. Though it can be worked in reverse, I think. A series of small wins. There's momentum that flows in both directions. So she'll get there. But it just sort of bothers me. Anytime I see people who have no skin in the game or have a lack of understanding of the difficulty of something, making fun of a thing. It's easy to develop a skewed sense of how easy something is when you're only an observer Observer, because typically if you're watching something, the reason why that person is in front of you is because they've they've worked on it. You know, they've done it. So they've gotten it to a point where they've worked out a lot of the, the intro wrinkles. If you were to try that yourself, you would realize it's way harder than you ever, ever imagined. It's really easy to tear something down. Anyone can do that from the safety of, you know, your room or an audience in a dark room. A few people will actually put themselves on the line for anything big like Eno's doing. So it's sort of a tragedy to see that be mocked. There's an ignorance there, even if it's an understandable ignorance. But it hurts to see someone punished for what I feel are really great gifts. Risk taking in this sort of construct of capacity where, you know, she's trying to do something great with her life is a beautiful thing and I want to see it encouraged. One of the easiest ways for me to gain appreciation for anyone doing anything is to have just the entry level of exposure to that thing. And I think I've tried enough things now that I can extend that more generally to, to any pursuit. I just love to see people doing stuff. It doesn't matter what it is because I just know that in doing so, they've inevitably adopted great things. Things like resilience, discipline, faith, the ability to have a goal and, and move towards it. It's nothing to be mocked, even if they're struggling. You know, it's the opposite. And flower. And sympathetic backstory. I see where she gets it. She wants to live up her family's ideals. 
パパとママは忙しくてお家に帰ってこれないだけなの。At the very least, there's a lot of good they can do. ニコちゃんはとても真面目。メダカに餌をあげて、お花の水を変える。This is so heartbreaking. It's beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time. She's just got a little bit too much responsibility and a little bit too much awareness a little bit too quickly. There's perhaps an instability to her world, which she turned into something really great. To take that energy and to decide to be a force for good is excellent. Even if, because there's something somewhat skewed about her premise, it's a little bit too overreaching, there's going to be something skewed about her application of a solution. That's too overreaching. But I mean, she's on target. But on net, it's pretty impressive. And what makes it potent is that at heart, it's just this girl. You know, it's a little girl who's vulnerable, you know, trying to create order that she's lacking in life in the world. And she risks being unpopular. She started at elementary school. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah, that's true for adults as well. No fear. She's got a greater fear that makes that possible. I mean, she definitely feels it. It's just that she has bigger, higher priorities for herself. Right? Of course. Of course. She just lives in a different world. Right, she's got a face for haters. No, that was sort of... Mean? Is this a little mean, no? Or is this a ploy? Is he trying to get out the emotion in her? This is the student council, they're schemers. I believe in Miyuki. I believe he wouldn't be cruel intentionally. Speak your mind. Forget the paper. <laughs> there it is. And Miyuki's got a new fan, just like that. <laughs> Tell him, Miko! Tell him how you really feel! Ooh! I wonder if Miyuki's watch, no less. Phones! And short skirts! And morals! And the students are real concerned about the reputation. Not our reputation! Ooh. Calling out the teachers, too. Ruru. <laughs> hey, you got a little heart there. <laughs> I love how this is happening for the whole school. Yeah, I mean, if you care about school and you care about university, this hits home, right? But more importantly, the passion. The passion gets in. I just like buzz cuts. Oh, really? You have... Wow, she brought data. <laughs> Data upon data. This turned into an improv debate. That actually is great for the kids. And that sort of sums up this whole encounter. One thing I appreciate about Miyuki, though, it was a little bit harsh at first, but to look at the other extreme, it ran the risk of being pandering. She's not someone that you need to pander to. Miyuki's straight up being honest with her. He, he's like actually engaging with her in a battle of ideas. That's a high form of respect in its way. And, you know, she's sort of crushing it. I feel like Miyuki is treating her as an equal, which speaks as well of him as a does of her. <laughs> 30 minutes? I mean, yeah, it's kind of riveting in its way, amazingly. Who would have thought that school event, public school politics could be this fun? Oh, of course. But there's nothing to be ashamed of. No, no, there's gonna be respect. It's fake out. Bully fake out. Yeah, there we go. Now she's going places. She needs to just tweak her outlook a little bit, like the tiniest bit. Yeah, this is a victory for everyone. Battle result. Spoiler. <laughs> Credit to the friends who were like caring this much. <laughs> yeah, this is her life. <laughs> if you had one, she would know what to do. Give Ino a, a spot. Bring her on. Let her be involved. They want to make Ino Miko smile. Yeah, this is really heartwarming. Kaguya is not getting called. Kaguya's gotta think, right? We're back to normal now, but is this the normal you want to keep repeating? Something's gotta give. This is maybe a wake-up call. High school will end, you know? Yeah, but it's not just Miyuki for her either. It's like her whole life, her whole social life outside of her prison. For a detective, Chika sure does drop a lot of clues. <laughs> or miss a lot of clues. This would be a great relationship, great role. Yeah, she wanted to win. Yes. 
You do a lot of good. No, take the role. Oh, you. you all right. We weren't really asking you. <laughs> Miko, do it, Miko. That could be amazing if she did. Though I could see another route for her. This might have been an awakening of kinds. You know, she sort of went all in. Something got unlocked. Treasurer. And whatever it is that Chica does. Mascot. <laughs> Soul and energy and heart of the whole group. That's an official role. A noble task for noble people. She legit like went out. Does he know, know that? Hi, man. You gotta. No, that's not the way to go. No, no. Come on. Come on, Kaguya. At what point do you take a look at the fact that your existence is misery and wonder if there isn't another way? If you're going about something the same way over and over again, and not only is that existence pure misery, but it seems to be getting worse, at what point do you kind of pause and take stock and question your you know, your core principles that have led you here? I don't want to be flippant about that. It's really difficult. But I think the sad irony of a lot of these situations is that in the avoidance of doing something that is terrifying, which is likely terrifying because of the potential of pain, you might end up in a situation that's way more painful painful. Death by a thousand tiny cuts, you know, instead of just facing something really difficult. And a lot of times in the facing of the thing, it's less difficult and less terrifying and less traumatic than it appears because it's not as significant as it might seem. It's a self-preservation thing that makes these things take on higher value than they seem to have. Miyuki, first of all, won't reject her. But he's not actually the answer to her problems. He is one possible facilitator of a solution to her problems. But it's going to come from her, one way or the other. This is not it. Like, I feel like she's spiraled deeper into this from the beginning of the show. She seemed sort of more in control and had plans and was adaptive and was more confident in certain ways. The more I watch, the more I get the sense that this war is kind of over. Miyuki won. He won because he's stable. You know, he's all right. Or he's you know, worried at a more manageable level that still allows him to be functional. This is not functional. There's something a little bit dark about this in this really lighthearted rom-com. I mean, I'm criticizing it. I've been in this exact situation more times than I would like to admit. More recently than I would like to admit. It's not logical. If this is where it leads. Right, I'm with Hayasaki. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel like it's telling of Kaguya's personality that she would think that. Maybe I'm giving this a darker light than I should, but I actually feel like the only one who's talked about other people as objects in the show is her. Mental disorder. We got a chart for that. We got an app for that. Ooh, that's a really, really interesting and terrifying thought. Oof. Why is that so relatable, though? It's her need to believe she's special that leads to a lot of this darkness in the first place. A lot of this is pride, but it's kind of undeserved or unearned, or she doesn't believe in it in a way that's satisfying to her. It's just a title to uphold, to defend, but it doesn't actually bring a lot of utility. That's the trappings of being praised or being idolized, is if you haven't done things that actually you feel really great about, you know, you don't actually like who you are, haven't handcrafted your own personality through difficult choices and introspection and whatever, it's sort of this artificial tool that you become attached to. It becomes a commodity, almost. Akin to a cherished household item where it's something you're afraid to lose but gain very little from. She, in fact, is special, but part of her journey is uncovering why she's special and how that will come about through honest exploration of her character and conscious choice, rather than just this default thing that people have given her. And Miyuki sees that in her, and Miyuki is a draw to pull that out of her. But part of the reason why it's so terrifying to talk to him honestly is because she's become so attached to it. She's formed so much of her identity around this title. She would have to make a leap out of that into something more personal selected, and she's not sure that people would accept her for that. Miyuki is just a symbol for all this. He's a great guy, he's a real catch, but it's not really about him. Now I gotta pretend like... I wasn't just... waiting eagerly. I mean, they crushed that election. Stunning defeat. Yeah, but you're in a dark cycle, though. I know it feels great, but the addiction just deepens. She's every bit as vulnerable as she was five minutes ago. We're back in action. Kaguya kind of got a convenient out there. I wonder how long that'll that'll pass. He's just this fan is glued to his hand. 
be cool. You got this. Yes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ooh, am I crazy? Am I overthinking this? This is a little dark for Kaguya. She's in danger. Miyuki accepting her or dating her is no longer an ideal solution. Unless there's a corresponding realization about who she is and what she needs. Everyone who's been down that road knows that a relationship doesn't solve your problems. It doesn't solve your emotional issues. It doesn't make you complete. I don't know where the show's going, but I can imagine if this is real life and Kaguya's development kind of ends here, but they get together. The result is not happiness. It's fear of losing him on a daily basis. It's self-insecurity and doubt. It's constant fear and maybe even resentment of Miyuki for being great because the underlying issue hasn't been addressed. I think to some extent your capacity to receive affection, positive regard, or, or love is closely tied to your ability to do that for yourself, your own evaluation of who you are and what you deserve. Because if she doesn't get there, even though Miyuki will genuinely love her, she won't believe it because how could someone love as wretched as me? And no one likes to feel like they're not doing a good job and she'll be aware that she's not matching him in that capacity. And no one likes to feel that way and so there's resentment that can grow there too. There's like a lot of danger that's ripe for the having here. I think what might be optimal is her sort of unwinding from this relationship a little bit. Maybe exploring her life in other ways that would bring her satisfaction in a manner she feels is self-directed and is actually about her and who she really is. Being able to take some risks in life, working on speaking more honestly, and maybe even an acceptance of the fact that she's not as special as she wants to believe she is, or at least not in the way she's attached to thinking she is. This is not something that people talk about because of the fact that generally I think we want to push people in the opposite direction, you know, we want to, we want to push people into feeling good and to thinking they're great, but you know, there's something about allowing yourself to self-humble at times, you know, like without judgment, without blame, you know, I am where I am, you know, and that's not what my ideal is, that's okay for now. But if you're attached to the idea that you are at already at your ideal when you're not, that's just a recipe for disaster and conflict. One thing I feel like I've had to push back on in my life, I have to unlearn this, is the idea that I'm just amazing. You know, that I'm just so great and the world is my oyster and I'm the best, you know? That was a trap more than it was a gift. I had to kind of allow myself to be nothing you know, to be terrible or worthless in a certain key sense. Because that gave me the freedom to actually think about what I actually wanted to be instead of what I had to pretend to be or the labels I had to protect through managing other people's image of me and thoughts of me, etc. This is a lot of work. It's exhausting and it's not satisfying. You know, I just am what I am. And in many ways, that's not ideal yet. There are a lot of ways I can improve, but, you know, I go no closer to improvement by lying about the stage I'm at. Kaguya sort of has been set up, I feel. She's been set up by her family, perhaps. She's been set up by the fact that she's naturally gifted. That works against her because people kind of expect that from her. Everywhere she goes, she's met with borderline worship. That probably feels really good on some level, but it's not a long-term strategy because she has to believe it. She's kind of taken Miyuki and made him the focal point of her proof of value, but in doing so, she's robbed herself of any agency in her own life, and that's what she needs to reclaim. And once she reclaims that, once she has a, you know, a freedom in that regard, then she can really love people. She can really love Miyuki, and she can really give to Miyuki, and she can accept Miyuki's love, which in its way is the same thing as loving Miyuki. Perhaps Miyuki is farther along in that regard because of his background. There were perhaps fewer expectations placed on him. He kind of made his own way. He has his hands kind of in the dirt. You know, he is more connected to building his image of himself, even if he has his own issues to deal with as well. Which I would wager a guess would be issues of value in society, the things that Kaguya has. This somehow, you know, without my realizing, kind of snuck up on me and goes a lot deeper than I thought. There's suddenly a lot of ground to cover, character-wise. So I'm fascinated to see if, if this will get addressed, and if so, how it will get addressed.